So then there has already set the stage for meaningful customer experience. I'm just gonna go right into it. I know you are all eager to get to the teas and biscuit outside, so let's not waste any more time. Um, but I will start the talk with my own understanding and own, own definition of what it means to be an experience. The festival of Navratri is just around the corner, and if you guys haven't been to Gujarat to experience the beautiful costume and music, then you must go. Sharing of food with thousands of people congregated for iftar at Delhi's Jama Masjid is an experience to have. The chanting, colors, and sensuality of uh, playing holy in Vrindavan is an experience to behold. At its most basic level, experience is a sensation of change. It's an alteration in our environment, our bodies, our spirit, our minds that we sense through our senses. From a business point of view, though, experience is an engagement that is delivered through an integrated system of touch points. It doesn't take place at one moment in time but it takes place throughout the duration of a customer's engagement. It is best visualized using a wave line of interconnected states of mind that a customer goes through as they engage with your offering. Here is a hypothetical example of a customer's retail shopping experience. The key takeaway that I want you guys to highlight here from a visualization of a customer experience using a wave line that a customer is going to go through several positive and negative states of mind throughout the entire engagement. But what he remembers at the end of a given engagement is going to contribute towards memory bias to an aggregate memory. So the next time when he's thinking about your, uh, your offering, that aggregate memory plays a role. As long as the aggregate memory is positive, a customer is more likely to engage with your uh, offering in future than not. So the goal is to make the engagement really memorable. So how can we do that? So let us take a step back and understand what is what drives a customer's typical decision-making process. What values customers value the most? So at the outermost level, it is the functionality. Does this product or service do what I want it to do? Does it do it as a price point that is worth paying for it? Beyond functionality and, and uh, uh, financial considerations are the emotional values. Does it, how does it make me feel? After that, it is the identity. We all are tribal. We like to be associated with one group over the other, whether we like it or not. Coke versus Pepsi, Mac versus PC, there are many such examples in the business world. But at the innermost layer of a consumer's psyche are the core meanings, which are the most stable. We all have created a version of the world for us, and we want to make sure that the decisions we make do fit into this version of reality. Notice that emotions are flitting. They don't last longer than a few seconds or minutes. We also change our identity, and financial and functional considerations are not good enough for, us, for a stable differentiation. Only by understanding the meanings that people seek, by engaging with your product and service, can a business connect with the customer, and also build a long-lasting relationship. However, businesses have traditionally focused too much on the financial and functional aspects of it, forgetting the emotional identity and the meaningful values that a customer is looking for from your offering. So meaningful, the word itself has become a buzzword. Everybody is using it very loosely without actually understanding that what do we mean by meaning? According to the seminal work, Interpretation of Cultures by Clifford Goertz, a meaning is a sense of reality. It's our mind's a construction of the world that we, have, we are living in. It gives us a framework to assess what we value, what we believe in, and above all, what we desire. The authors of a book, uh, another uh, really fantastic book, Making Meaning, have come up with these 15 core meanings which are universal and also are cross-cultural, and therefore you can build a strategy around it for a global outreach. The key here is that those businesses that have tried to evoke these meanings into their customers' lives have successfully connected with those customers, build long-lasting relationships, and transform those customers into loyal customers. So let us look at, look at some examples of the businesses who have actually done this. A method. 
which is a, a US-based home cleaning products company, they took a simple household activity to the next level. They first made their products look and feel really beautiful. Think about experiencing beauty while cleaning dirty. Next, they made a pledge that they are going to be harmonious with the nature. While cleaning our homes, we don't need to dirty the environment. Biodegradable bottles, uh, organic cleaning agents, they are selling you being harmonious with the nature while you do a very simple household activity. Disney is not about animated films or adventure parks, but it is selling wonder and happiness. N uh, uh, Nike is all about accomplishment. And this particular Taj Hotel in Maldives wants you to feel one with the nature. They have brought their entire restaurant right out on the beach. Levi's wants you to feel validated, that you are a valued individual. Go ahead, wear our logo proudly on, your, on yourself and be a proud owner of a Levi's t-shirt. IKEA is not just selling beautiful, affordable furniture, but they have taken the do-it-yourself movement to the next level. We feel accomplished as we pick up the furniture from their warehouse, take it to our home, and build the entire furniture our own self. Paragonia, that Sudhinder also mentioned, is also about being harmonious with the nature. Their website literally shut down on the day New uh, a climate march took place in New York to coincide with the UN's climate summit. Chobani, which is a Greek yogurt company, is not just selling a cup of yogurt, but in doing so, they are trying to build communities. As you can see, focusing on meanings is strategic for businesses. It makes perfect sense for businesses to be in the business of evoking meanings in their customers' lives, because only by doing that can they build a connection with the customer, and only by connecting with the customers can you build a long-lasting relationship, which is fundamental if you were to transform your customer base into a loyal customer base. You, you figure out what meanings are priority for the customers, what the competition is offering, what your own capabilities are, and then you strategically focus on the meaningful experiences that no one else is delivering. As an example, one of my client, an IT infrastructure monitoring software company, they realized that IT administrators are a stressed out bunch. What they value the most is a freedom from worrying about not knowing what is happening in their network and the peace of mind. So freedom and peace of mind became the strategic experiences that an IT company is now going to deliver to its IT administrators. Focusing on meaning can also lead to a much better customer segmentation beyond uh, demographics and beyond economic consideration. As an example, another client of mine an NGO working in Ahmedabad, trying to prevent dropouts from uh, municipal school children, they realize that parents tend to belong into three categories. Those who are wishing to redeem themselves because of their own illiteracy, and therefore are more likely to continue their, school, their uh, children's education. Those who are looking for freedom from poverty and security from money, and therefore are more likely to take their kids out of the school and put them into the labor force so that they can make uh, more money, so that they can get out of the poverty in a shorter time frame. And those who have realized that it is their duty to educate their children. Armed with such meaningful segmentation of the customer base, the NGO can now uh, come up with the proper design interventions. Okay. Sorry for that. That also happens. <laughs> ah. All right. I have to rush through. Mm. Okay. So the question that comes now is that how do we know what do people want? How do you figure out what experiences they desire? And that is a fundamental question because most of the time people cannot even articulate what they are looking for. So at Abir, what we do beyond the time-tested methodologies of uh, um, you know, ethnographic qualitative research, we also use visual clues during our interview processes. Here is a representational set of images. Each of this image represents one of those 15 core meanings. And by asking a simple question, 
which image is best to represent the experience that you are seeking, we at least start a conversation which we wouldn't otherwise have had. So now that I have talked a bit about what and why of a meaningful experience, as I close my presentation, let's talk briefly about how can you design a meaningful experience. Experiences themselves are very individual. You cannot actually force someone to feel certain way and therefore it is not in our, in, in our complete control. But there exist methodologies and frameworks for businesses that can help them design and deliver an experience. This entire concept of designing an experience is not new. Uh, folks in performing arts, literature, as well as in the film industry have been designing experiences for a long time. Over the duration of a concert, or as you are watching a film, or if you are reading a book, the maestro, the director, the writer is slowly taking you through a journey of experiences towards a certain climax that he or she has designed to the last level of detail. This is a very managed form of an experience. But in a, customer, in a business situation, the experience designer cannot control what the person is going to feel or not feel as it engages with your offering. And there, but the only thing that an experience designer can control is the stimuli that it can give it to the customer at each touch point. By stimuli, I mean the tangible and intangible value exchange that happens between the customer and your offering. And these value exchange can be delivered either through product or service. So the end goal here is to control the exchange that happens between the customer and your value offering at each of the different engagement touch point so that to maximize the possibility of a customer feeling what you want them to feel, what emotions you want them to deliver, the meaningful experiences that you are trying to deliver. Here is an example of a, a very detailed wave line for a PC purchasing experience for a typical customer. The top line here, which is in the yellow, that represents the ideal customer, ideal customer experience that the client is wishing to uh, deliver. The other three lines are the current situation that the three strategic customer segments are going through. By plotting the ideal situation and the current situation on the same, uh, same map, now you can visualize and you can ideate where are the opportunities and how can you come up with the proper design intervention to fill the gap. Here is another example and I have zoomed into a section so that you guys can understand how the value exchange happens through product and service at a given touch point so as to uh, uh, evoke a certain kind of feeling, emotion, meanings into customers' lives. In closing, the frameworks, methodology, and ideas that I just shared with you, they are not entirely mine. There were trailblazers, uh, especially uh, the book Interpretation of Culture, Making Meaning, and the Experience Economy. These are the people who have actually come up with these uh, ideas, and what I'm doing here is to put together a toolkit for my clients so that I can help the businesses design their business, keeping customer experience at the center of it. I thank you for your time and attention, and you guys can all now go for the tea break. Thank you.